Welcome to the channel, everybody. And thank you so much for all of the birthday well wishes yesterday. And I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the premiere that we uploaded. And I think that must have been probably one of the greatest inspirations that we've received from the Holy Spirit in helping to break down some of the microbiology that's contained within the Bible. Now, for those of you that missed yesterday's premiere, it's definitely one you want to watch all the way through the end. We looked at blue blood molecules shaped like the star of Remphan. We also looked at regular red blood molecules that were shaped like an up and down arrow. And we broke all that down in a premiere. Now, today, we're going to look at two montages that I put together over the last few days on the film called The Giver. Now, this first montage we uploaded on the other channel. For some reason, in the back half of this video, you had to use headphones in order to be able to hear. There's some kind of sound glitch going on. We're not going to watch that part because there's going to be people that can't hear it. But if you're interested in this, this is crazy because we break down the tree. We show the fingerprint of the tree and all of that. But we're not going to watch that today. If you're interested in that, go look on the other channel and definitely put in your headphones. We're just going to look at the first few minutes of this montage. And we're going to break down this film, The Giver. Now, I also incorporated into this um, some screenshots and little clips from a new series called Debris. And here they're going to talk about arches and portals. So what is the film The Giver all about? Well, let me give you the backdrop and then we can get into the rest of the film. So the film opens with an entire society that lives upon this flat plane. And the flat plane is floating in the clouds. And it's not a very big community. It probably looks like maybe the size of a small city. But there's this barrier around them, which looks a lot like the firmament, or it's described as the firmament. Now, let's pl start playing this first trailer, and then we'll get into the rest of this. Maybe they're all on different frequencies, like a walkie-talkie, and we just happen to pick up hers and the white noise. I think it's some sort of portal. What is it? There are these Native American legends that tell stories of people who encounter natural arches in the landscape. Now, of course, that was from Debris, the new TV series. And they're talking about portals and frequencies and arches being those portals. Now, why is that important? Well, we talked about our entire reality being made up of the creation of God through frequencies. He breathed in air into Adam's lungs rearranging the dust particles into a, a living being. And in fact, somatics pretty much shows how things fit together through sound. Now, we might not be able to hear the sound of God coming through, uh, much like a dog can only hear, can hear a dog whistle, but many people cannot hear that. So it's something similar to that. But creation and nested realities, this is probably the mechanism behind how God created us. Um, he is all-knowing, the beginning and the end. And using sound, which would make perfect sense if you think about it, uh, the angels sing to the glory of God in heaven. There's a lot of singing going on, isn't there? It would make sense that this is how God constructed our reality. Now, even the atoms on the atomic level seem to indicate that there is something going on with sound. And that there are octaves of electrons that dance around the proton and the neutron nucleus. And they build from the simplest atoms in the periodic table, the simplest elements, to the most complex elements. They are building upon one another. Shells within shells, things within things. And this is how our reality is constructed. It's just, uh, constructed as a nested reality. Things within things. Now, we're going to get into this a little bit more later in the week as I begin to break down the boys from Brazil. And that was all about uh, Mengele, who went to hide down in South America and was running twin experiments. And uh, so we're going to cover that. But in there, they basically tried a clone 
in that film, they try to clone the the guy, the guy from the country who uh, we can't even name his name, right? H-I-T-L-E-R. So they try to clone him in the film. We're going to break all that down. I already up or I'm actually going to upload a montage on that later today for the boys from Brazil. So you guys will want to check that out. It'll be tonight. So we'll do a premiere on that tonight. But let's get back into this. I just wanted to bring all that together so you can understand that sound has a lot to do with this. Now, this clip is actually the beginning of the decode dealing with the actual film, The Giver. Let's watch. They're called books. Your books. Uh, my name I is... I know who you are. So this guy is called The Giver, played by Jeff Bridges. And basically what he does is he is the keeper of all the entire history of this community that I told you about. It's a plane upon the clouds with some kind of a firmament barrier. And his job is to hand off all this knowledge to the receiver, which would be this boy here. Okay. Now, emotion and love has gone extinct in this society and that is a mechanism of self-preservation of course jeff bridges holds the memories he's going to give to the boy but notice how they're in the library and the library of course are made from the pulp of trees and specifically the trees are what we are made from we're made from the tree of life and there were many trees in the garden. And we talked about how these trees that were in the garden were possibly portals to parts of God's many rooms in his mansion, spoken about in the Bible. And Adam and Eve had access to it before they fell, but now we're all cut off from that, right? We had also discovered here on this channel that arches are portals, like the Arch of Palmyra, that's a portal to hell through human sacrifice. And then you have the Arch of Triumph. And there are many Arches of Triumph all over the world that go into cities. They're portals to cities. Portal Arches. And we know that the spear passes through these Arches. A spear coming out of the chest. And that's how they pierce the veil or try to jump through time. We determined that that was the serpent in the chest. Which is our demons that continuously possess different human hosts throughout history and this is how they jump through time it's the serpent in the chest or the spear or arrow in the chest and all of this imagery is on display here in the film the giver so jeff bridges passes down the knowledge of the truth uh to the receiver jonas which is the boy now jonas is always the water figure in these kinds of films and of course, waters are portals too, or more specifically, the medium through which time passes. It goes through water, and of course, water travels up trees. This is why in the garden of in the uh, book of Genesis, they talk about the trees of the garden. And then immediately, they go to the different the three rivers, right? Pison, Gaishon, and there's another one I can't remember the third river. But they talk about the rivers in conjunction with the trees because water travels up trees. That's how trees drink the water from the roots to the limbs. This is why when we're born again, Jesus tells us to be submerged in water. Because the water is the conduit through your spiritual being saved by him and letting him into your heart. It's the portal of Jesus entering your heart. And when we're born into this world... And born into sin, we're encased in water as well. Now, Jonah in the Bible was encased in the belly of a fish for three days in the water. This was all symbolic as well. It really happened, but it was also symbolic. And he prophesied for 40 days and nights to Nineveh for them to repent. And that's how long a human child gestates in the womb, 40 weeks. We're in the womb after the last menses. Now, of course, Nineveh is synonymous with water as well, right? There's like, a, isn't there like a shampoo or a soap called Nineveh, 
or something like that. Anyway, so the giver, uh, Jeff Bridges, is able to transfer this knowledge of the history of the society before they were basically neutered into this boy by touch. Touch is Jonas. He pa then they pass through this portal of time and memories. So this confirms that the libraries are in fact portals. They represent the trees, which are portals. Ground up pulp of trees. Stuck in cubes, stacked on shelves. Now, where do we see these libraries? Well, we saw it in Interstellar. That's where uh, Matthew McConaughey passes through time, through the library, through interdimensions. And also we saw it in The Magicians, the series The Magicians, where they go through uh, the library portal. So this montage opens with this very specific symbolism. And let's keep watching this here. Where they pass through and they never return. I will transmit to you all the memories that I hold within me. There you see the arch, which are, is the portal, right? And this house, this library in which the giver lives is standing on the edge of the firmament, okay? Which would also indicate it is the route or way uh, past into another dimension, to another realm outside the firmament, right? So think about that for a second. Now... Some apocryphal texts say that Enoch was the only one to really go through the firmament. One of those texts actually talks about him going through an icy region, like an ice wall. And he was like chased or something. I can't remember exactly how it went. But uh, there's something to this. Memories of the past. I would be very interested to learn about your life. You encounter natural arches in the landscape. Natural arches in the landscape. Now, you're going to notice the above and below component to this. That has something to do with this as well. And when we looked at the molecule of a red blood cell, it had an up and down formation to it in yesterday's show. But it was unbound. So you had the hex of the blue blood cells, the hemocyanin blood cell protein, was bound. But then the red blood cell protein was unbound. So it was an arrow going up and down. See the ladder here? All of this is significant. The ladder. There's so much more to this film than anyone was really looked at. But there you go, the above and below. Maybe it's something like that. You said you think it might still be here, but we can't see it. That there may be as many as 11 dimensions. And most of these dimensions are compactified. Do you believe that? I don't know. My dad did. Are, are curled up so small that we can neither see nor reach them. Curled up. So they mentioned this curling up, which of course is a spiral, which is also the portal. If you think about the way a tree grows, many trees will twist up as they grow. And we see this twisting motion as well in the birth canal. The birth canal is actually a twisted tube, as well as the musculature of birth into this reality. And of course, we have whirlpools inside of pools of water. That's the twisted reality born into through this portal. Now, when we speak about frequencies, what if... The frequency of love, and I'm not just talking love in general, but I'm talking about the source of all love, which is Jesus Christ. What if that specific belief in him, because the Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What if that specific belief holds a frequency and that frequency is the mechanism by which we go through the narrow gate? the portal back to him and rejoin him is a frequency of being like Jesus in the Bible, trying to read about him and learn about him and try to live your life like he lived his life to the best of your ability. 
loving one another. These were his commandments. Love one another, right? As he loved us. Judge not, lest ye thee be judged yourself. Be baptized. Try to follow his example. Let go of material things. There's a pretty short list of things that we can be doing right now from this day forward to align ourselves with Jesus so that when he comes back, he doesn't say things like, I never knew you. Wouldn't it be interesting if he said, I never heard you? Like the frequencies did not line up. So this film talks about this spiral, the gate. And as he's talking about this in, this is from Debris actually, I put this clip side by side with the clip of Jonas walking down the spiral staircase in the library, in the portal. Dimensions could be uncurled. That there are places in our world where they've already done so. We caught it. You are. So he enters a portal into this snow realm. Now, this is Jonas' first vision in this realm of snow. Which, later in the film, becomes the firmament that he passes through. Do you see how you can't make this up? How it all fits together? So, his portal vision, passing through the very first time with the giver, ends up becoming the final barrier that he has to pass through at the end of the film to escape the Matrix. <laughs> That was, it was, how did that happen? And you see the spiral staircase curled up. Curled up. Curled up. Curled up. Access points. Access points to vast stretches of what you might call unoccupied real estate what do you mean how it happened but it's impossible yeah it did happen wait for someone to figure out how to use them so that was the giver and debris these are the dates that they released uh, 2021 is Debris and The Giver uh, was in 2014. Now, at this point of, of this particular montage, again, you got to use headphones if you want to listen to the rest of this. But I talk about the fruit in the womb and how the womb overlays and is a nested reality of the eyeball. The anatomy of the eyeball mimics the same features as the womb so we go over that in that now let's get back to this second montage that i put together this one i just uploaded and again this is on the giver um let me go in here real quick hey everybody welcome welcome all right let's get into this now in the film they grow babies in pods and they euthanize any imperfect children or the elderly, or the infirm, but people have no knowledge of it. They don't know what they're doing, okay? And it reminds me of the carousel in the film Logan's Run. Remember, had no one had any knowledge that anything bad was going on, even though it was happening in plain sight. They just did all accepted it because they had no knowledge of it. Well, this is what the devil wants you to believe that heaven is like he wants you to believe that once we get to heaven bad things are going to continue to happen but god you're just not going to have any knowledge of it he is telling us the knowledge that the tree of life is basically no knowledge of evil even though it continues to happen and i don't believe that's going to be the case whatsoever we won't have the ability to do evil Think of it like a bike. A 10-speed bike would be the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
and a three speed bike would be the tree of life. So when you go into the tree of life, it's almost like you're like if you tried to strike someone, it just wouldn't happen. The thought wouldn't even enter your mind. But the devil is full of tricks. He's the accuser. He doesn't want a fruit. He doesn't want um, a, any kind of control. He wants the ability to do evil. And he wants us all to have that ability too. So don't get sucked into that. Now, in the film, people mostly ride bikes. And I believe that these are themes that are coming. And it's going to be all about the social fabric of our reality. This is what they want us to all look like soon. Cap and trade carbon units for each of us. Everybody receives daily VCs through their wrist to suppress their individuality. There are surveillance drones. There are work assignments. And there's a lot of artificial intelligence controlling things. So Jonas receives the memories but what happens is, is he begins to want to change the way that their world looks. He realizes that killing never really stopped. It was just repackaged as euthanasia. And it was made acceptable by erasing people's emotion. Let's keep playing this second trailer. Memories were set free. All of the pain that you felt, all the confusion, the chaos, it would all return. If you had that map, then why didn't you try to leave? I was waiting. For someone like you. So uh, Jeff Bridges, the giver, pulls out this this map, right? And the map has the firmament on it. If you did, see this, it says did cross this boundary. It's called the boundary of memory. And so what happens is Jonas devises a plan to break through the matrix. And the very last part, he passes through. The pill, these two pillars, and I believe these are the pillars of good and evil. Okay. And if the memories were set free, all of the pain that you felt, all the confusion, the chaos, it would all return. If you had that map, then why didn't you try to leave? I was waiting for someone like you. You are the reason we have a chance. So the plan will be for you to go and for me to stay. So there is the planet that they live on. And here is a more confirmation. See this convex lens here? This is the lens of your inner eye. Uh, it could also be a symbol of the firmament. And there they all live on this flat plane. Uh, with that firmament as I just de demonstrated to you amongst the clouds. Now, notice how this looks like a tree stump. They're on the top of a tree stump. And so inside of this cross section would be rings, right? And I counted 30 of these on each side, 30 of these circles. But isn't this interesting? The angels labored at the trees. This is everything we've been talking about. And so here they are on this tree stump. Let's keep watching. I'll let you decide. Once when I was looking at that mist, even though they tell us there's nothing close to the edge, I thought I saw a tree out there somewhere. <laughs> there's your confirmation right there. They, she thought she saw a tree. So in this scene, they're about to go to, they're about to attend their childhood ending ceremony where their, their childhood is ending and they're assigned their role in life. But before they do, they enter this triangle through this waterfall. And what this signifies is water birth. And the triangle that you see here is the womb. It's the down arrow into this world. And that's exactly what a womb is shaped like, a down arrow into this, into this world. Now, we talked about the down arrow and the up arrow because it's the protein of hemoglobin 
molecule, the red blood cells. And we're going to look that up. Now, this is on yesterday's show. But I've got to show you this because this could quite possibly be one of the greatest discoveries, biblical discoveries, because it's microbiology. There's no way any of the biblical writers could have known this. But here you have something amazing. You have the down arrow and an up arrow. And you also have a nine and a six. And Jesus came down in a manger. His blood is the red blood. It's the pure blood. He came down in the manger, which is shaped like a down arrow. And he went back up after the cross. Notice both are made out of wood. The trees, the portals came down in a major made out of wood, went up on a cross made out of wood. And, I mean, oh my gosh, I'm just getting goosebumps right now. So, some say he was born in 6 BC. So this would be your down arrow, born in the manger, 6. Let me pull up an image of the manger. Manger. Christ. This is what a manger looked like. It's a down arrow. It's the microbiology of a red blood cell. The pure red of Jesus versus the blue bloods. Let me show you the blue bloods. This is, what was it called? Um... Now, this is microbiology. This is a blue blood protein. And its down and up arrows are bound into the hex. There is no getting off world. You have to go through here. The cleansed blood this is why he said, this is my blood. It's the wine. It's the red blood. It's all about the blood. There's life in the blood. So, let's get back to this here. Okay, but wouldn't the joke be better if the old man says... One, one two... two. Three! <laughs> I guess everything's gonna be different. No. Tomorrow, the only thing that changes is what we do. It doesn't change who we are. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess this is it. The last night of our childhood. <laughs> um, are we graduates now? You do this every time. Okay. Come on! One, two, three! <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, that is birth. Now, these are the children born in these pods. And Jonah's father is an, a euthanasia doctor. So any imperfect ones, he sh basically s drops them down into a trash chute. And they use this elephant to play with the child. This is a mythical creature called a hippo. <laughs> Except the dad doesn't know that this is an elephant. He calls it a hippo. Now, L means tree. It's the terebinth tree in Hebrew. L. Why do you think that they call God Elohim as a God creator in Genesis? Because it was all about the trees. The portals. No! There's Jonas laying in bed, and there's lots and lots of imagery of trees. Here's one right above his head on the wall in the bed. Not right above his head, but right above his bed there. And again, remember, they're all living on a giant tree stump.
they're all in a big tree house. Now here, they show the tree, another tree on the wall of the child. And the child is born out of this tree. You see? Whoa, what is that? There's something at the bottom of that tree there. It almost looks like a, a, a placenta with an umbilical cord at the bottom there, doesn't it? Anyway, that's the inference here. Let's see, I'm, let's count these. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 21 fruits. So, in effect, symbolically, they're holding another tree trunk. They're playing with him with the tree trunk, with his L, the elephant, his trunk. And it's incredibly fast because it has two, three, four, five legs. And there's the lone tree that the girl sees out past down onto the ground outside of the tree stump that they're all living on. Here's some portal imagery here. This is the twisted spiral. The portal. Curled up. They're in the trees! They're in the trees, Robbie! Get down! And of course, the giver is having another flashback saying that they're in the trees. Now, what you're going to notice is all the other biblical symbolism here. You're going to see apples. There's also the sacrifice. Of, and then there's the obvious, which is like Eve and Adam, which is uh, the girl and Jonas. Remember the sign of Jonah? That Jesus talked about. And of course they're living in one big garden. Atop this tree stump. Get down! Robbie, get down! Robbie, get down! Just like her hair. Yes. There's red, green, blue. Many different colors. You can't quit. If you quit your position, you get sent to elsewhere. When you leave in the morning, put the apple over the sensor. It'll find your blood and think it's your hand. Stop, you're scaring me. So, the blood, the prick. The prick of the apple. Uh, this is the sacrifice, the deception of Eve. Now, what is the fruit represent? It's the magnetic field that we're trapped in. That's why apples are shaped like a magnetic field, and all fruit for that matter. Yeah, sometimes I get people on the channel that want to play gotcha. They're like, "Why do you keep showing an apple? It doesn't matter what I show. If it if it if it makes you feel better, I could show an orange, which also has the same magnetic field shape. I could show you a pear." All fruit have the same magnetic field shape. So it doesn't matter what you use. An apple is just a very clean and easy representation to show of the fruit. The fruit is the magnetic field that we're trapped in. Now, yesterday's show will explain this in far more detail if you're having doubts. Because we went into this in depth about this magnetic field. Tomorrow morning, skip your injection. What, you quit? Prick your feet. Notice a magnetic field looks like a tree as well. The Fruit does not fall far from the tree. That's because the shape of the apple is the shape of a tree. If you think about it, the roots coming out, coming back up and around, the branches coming out and down to the ground. You're going to put a little blood on this apple. You'll see them all in time. Put your finger and put a little blood on this apple. Now, many of you uh, saw the maze. That is this reality that we walk through, the, the reality of life. Now, the maze is the spiral. It's a portal too. And we told you about that with the planet Saturn. The outer ring of Saturn is not a ring at all. It's a spiral. It's the hex. That's why there's a hex at the north pole of Saturn. That is the hex we're stuck in. Saturn is a visual representation of sin entering our world, our dimension, our tree. And notice the golden ratio of this letter box here that the giver sits in and this reminds me of the scene from childhood's end where the demons come out of the letter box shape with the children remember so it's interesting that this spiral is sitting in the letter box because this is we'll see them all in time but our people, 
They chose to do away with all of them. If we were different, we could be envious, angry, resentful, consumed with hatred, color, race, religion. They created sameness. But still, it's also beautiful. We need sameness, don't you think? Oh, I can completely agree. Sameness. Beautiful. We need sameness, don't you think? Oh, I completely agree. So what is the sameness that Jeff Bridges is talking about here? He's talking about what heaven is supposed to be like or what they're trying to claim it's like, but it's really not that way. It's not going to be same. It's going to be infinite numbers of realities, infinite trees of the garden that we're going to once again have access to. There's going to be no sameness, but this is what they're trying to do. This is the, this is the deception of this film. Because it sounds all great, right? We've got all these biblical themes running through this. But when you really think about what they're saying here, what are they really saying here? What are they saying here? Heaven is the life being depicted in utopia, in the utopia here, in this world. They're really trying to depict heaven, but they're giving it a slant that is not true. Nobody having the ability to do evil, or at least knowingly do evil. And Jonas is trying to get the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is where he's trying to get to, where you can do without will, where there is pain and suffering and choice. So this entire film is like a role reversal. It's basically putting heaven on judgment. Do you ever hear your children say things like, I don't want to go to heaven, and it just scares the you-know-what out of you? Because you're like, why would a child say that? They say things like, wouldn't heaven be boring? Sitting around in robes all day with harps? That's the enemy talking. That's the programming. Planting the seeds of doubt. The accuser. This is what, this is why Satan fell. Because he started thinking this way. He thought he could do it better than God. And you'll notice, you, you can feel the programming because notice that there are very few films that delve deeply into what heaven will really look like. There are no amazing films that show the glory of heaven and these infinite dimensions that we can go play in, these different gardens and places. None of that's talked about. There's a reason for that. Heck, you can even do a Google search on images of heaven, and there isn't very much out there. There's some cartoon-like stuff, but there's almost nothing that's awe-inspiring, like some amazing artwork with, with angels and or different dimensions of reality. They don't want your eyes fixed on heaven. Jesus told us, keep your eyes fixed on heaven. Okay, let's finish this out here. Now this is Jonas. He escapes the tree stump, and he's now on a sled. And he's going down, and he's going to go right through the trees of the knowledge of good and evil. And that releases the whatever was holding their tree stump back from experiencing all those things, it releases it as this wave of truth comes like over the whole place. Notice there's always these hypodermic needles, right? This is part of it. These are the fangs of the serpent. As I told you, this is why there were two shots given. Those are fangs. It was all symbolic. Would you deny Christ once? Many people could by accident, but would you do it a second time? When you take the second shot, that's your second denial of Christ. Because he is the healer. So, 
This is how the blue blood serpent infected man with the fangs of the serpent. Today I felt a switch in my vein. Today I feel a switch in my veins. That would be the blue blood serpent. That was the closing song of this film. The switching in your veins. See how it's a blue wave coming over the tree stump? Today I feel a switch in my veins. And there's the blue, and there's Jonas passing into the trees of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's it. Now, of course, I'll put these in the pinned comments. Appreciate everybody showing up. To me, these are the most fun, these kinds of decodes, because it shows you how consumed the enemy is with the Most High. He wants to elevate himself above the Most High. The Bible tells us this, but not a lot of people believe it. I always worry about People on YouTube claim to be so spiritual, but they deny this, the Bible, or they deny Christ, really, and what he really came to do. These are the miracles of the proof that the Bible is real. And you can be as spiritual as you want, but there's only one way to the Father. There's only one way through the narrow gate. And if you spend most of your time denying that Christ is the Savior and trying to find other spiritual ways to get there, um... All I can say is uh, that might not be a very good choice. You got to ask yourself, why do I want to deny him so much? Well, a lot of people say, oh, it's because of Christianity. Well, understand that the enemy infiltrated the Christian religion a long time ago. He did it on purpose so that you would have that bad taste in your mouth about Christ. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Understand that that's what happened. You can't throw the Bible out just because a religion uses it. You can't throw Jesus out just because they claim to be doing things according to Jesus. They've been already compromised. There's no power in the church. Okay? But don't throw Jesus out and as the savior of all mankind and don't throw the Bible out as somehow written by Freemasons to control people's minds. Because that's not what happened. Okay, let's go into the chat here. Appreciate everybody coming to the show today. Hate to even call it a show. This isn't a show. It's all of us getting together and talking about these spiritual things that are amazing. Yeah, the flux capacitor is a triangle from Back to the Future. It says slick dissident. Good, good observations there. So now you're starting to understand that was time travel, remember? Traveling from the infinite to the finite realm, to the timeline. We're stuck in the timeline. Bird on a wire. All right. Yes, the Bible is our instruction book. And look at all the hidden secrets we found in the Bible just in the past 10 years that we've been on this channel. Amazing stuff. Hidden from us. So, yes, the elephant is, isn't a hippo. You're right. That was a mistake in the film because the father was naive. He didn't know what it was. He was told it was a hippo, but it was really an elephant. All right. Thanks, Carla. Thanks, everybody. Yes, King James was a Freemason. All he did was offer a translation of the Bible. That doesn't, again, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. 
The Bible existed long, long before that in scrolls and manuscripts. In fact, there's a very good collection of those manuscripts at the Dead Sea that predate King James by thousands of years or a thousand years anyway. Don't get caught up in in what they try, how the people try to discredit the Bible. A rhino is a unicorn, says Hardy Har. Yes. The elephant in the room. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, don't get caught up in that. So people will say, you got to have an answer. You say, look, it doesn't matter who translated the Bible. Look at the Dead Sea Scrolls. Here's the miracle of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Ready for this? They found these ancient scrolls in a cave that no one had even been in that area for a thousand years. And some boy, a shepherd boy, was cruising around out there throwing rocks and he threw a rock into a cave and it like hit something. Lo and behold, they pull all these scrolls out and they match exactly our modern Bible, which tells you that it's been accurately transcribed over the years. Here's the problem. They also found the Book of Enoch inside of the cave. Why didn't they update our modern canon to include some of the books found in that cave? And they did not. So there you go. The Book of Enoch that they found in there was dated back before the time of Christ. Which is why the Book of Jude quotes the Book of Enoch. Can't throw that out. So, we have the answer. Yes, Jesus is the answer, Susie. Absolutely. Uh, in, in this day and age, it's like we have to continue to... We don't have to. This is part of the Great Awakening. This is part of the increase in knowledge in the last days. God knew that we would need this. Why? Because there would be people out there trying to discredit Jesus, discredit the Bible. And so, all of this proof had to come forward. And I'm just blessed to be part of it. And all of you are part of it. All the way down to the molecular level. Blue blood versus red blood. Nobody had microscopes back then. They could have not, they, they couldn't have known this. The symbolism and imagery right in the, the molecules of the blood. So there goes people's, um, you know, trying to discredit the Bible, saying that it was written in modern time and that that couldn't have happened. Because if it was, you wouldn't have all the symbolism down to the molecular level. So, all right. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Appreciate everyone coming out. Be back on tomorrow. Be saved if you haven't already. Understand that nothing that you saw here today came from me. This was a message from the Holy Spirit and all the glory goes to the Most High. I wouldn't be able to do anything that I do without Him and His inspiration and help. So give Him the credit. So if you're feeling amazed, don't think of me. Think of the Most High and His Son. Have a great day, everybody.